Hello, hello. Thank you again for joining us on the Enscope podcast. My name is John Scott. I'm the CEO of ScopeStack. We're an um, IT services automation platform. And, and so I'll be your host today. With me, um, I, have, I have a guy that I've known for a couple of years, having just started our business, ran across him and continued to run across him and, and his background, um, Todd Kane from Evolved Management Consulting. So Todd's a principal um, owner over at Evolved. And, and again, Todd, you have um, a wealth of knowledge, background experience in the MSP space, but you also started kind of in the VAR industry like me, right? So um, I think yeah, you'll right. yeah, have some awesome perspective to bring. And again, thanks for joining me, man, on I think it's like our third or fourth webinar podcast thing that we've done together at this point. Yeah, it's great. I, I enjoy chatting with you. We have kind of <laughs> similar, similar background, similar sort of take on these things. And, and I, I appreciate the work that you guys are doing and making this stuff easier for, for the community as well. Yeah, man, similar hairstyles too, right? So, I mean, That's we right. have that going. Um, <laughs> yeah, all these years of stress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we look like this so all of our listeners can look like they do, ideally much better right. than we do. But um, right. <laughs> no, man, thanks for, again, thanks for joining us. And you know, I, like I said, I, you know, you and I started our careers kind of in the, the VAR traditional project oriented space, right? However, past how many years you've kind of been diving into the MSP space? How long have you been doing the Evolve thing and kind of speaking into the MSP community? Yeah, so my consulting started on that sort of project and VAR and hybrid IT side. Uh, before I graduated high school, essentially, like I was the oh, wow. neighborhood nerd who wore a tie to school so I could go to client <laughs> oh, sites after guy. school. And, awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, uh, the history runs deep there um, <laughs> and had a ton of experience in, in high growth consulting organizations and things like that. And then the more recent experience kind of over the last, I would say, 10 or 12 years uh, has been, uh, well, yeah, probably closer to 15 now. Holy crap. Uh, <laughs> 15 years more on that MSP side. So kind of, I, and I think that's sort of the, also the natural evolution of the, uh, of the model as well from IT consulting is everyone is starting to recognize like there's still a place for the VAR and the, the PS side, even the hybrid yeah. IT for that matter. But a lot of them are starting to actually kind of merge together and the central component really being that recurring revenue model from an IT services perspective is really attractive to a lot of people. Uh, as you can appreciate people that have lived in uh, traditionally a VAR model who ride this roller coaster of uh, sales and dips and valleys and yeah. uh, you know the the inconsistency of that revenue is it can be a, a, a pretty stressful uh, bit to manage on that VAR side. So the recurring model around that that MRR is really attractive to all parties at this point. Yeah, and, and like I was in you know in the professional services kind of space, building those teams as well and. You know, having built a business that is purely based around recurring revenue, right? You're right. It's it's it feels completely different. However, they're both kind of interconnected at the same time, right? Like we, you know, at ScopeStack, we still offer fixed fee based projects, right? That we scope and price out, as well as our monthly subscriptions. And so those two things are definitely bring their they have their pros and cons, right? Each of them do so. Um, and they're not they're not distinct either, right? Like anyone who's running a tr uh, sort of a more modern MSP with sort of high uh, high amount of MRR, they're still yeah. going to be doing projects and hopefully on a fixed fee basis for the most part. Uh, so there, there's you know there's there uh, both models typically exist in in both places. It's just sort of what's the percentage of your business that sits on one side or the other of that that equation, right? Yeah. And is it like, are you seeing, I mean, we've had a couple of other guests on here too, like where we really start talking about, Hey, we're, we're looking for the business outcome as opposed to just completing the project or just signing yeah. someone up for another recurring, you know, subscription of some sort. Right. So like, are, are you seeing that kind of shift towards, to your point, like it's, it's solution oriented, who cares if it's recurring or like the operating model of that to a certain extent, um, it's the solution. It's the outcome that the client is really wanting. I mean, are you Absolutely. seeing that? Okay. Yeah, definitely. And I think that that's honestly where a lot of people kind of get this model wrong, right? Is, is mm. they, they want to lead with the technology and, you know, uh, that works in certain circumstances. Like the VARs, I think have a, have, uh, a more of an, uh, 
uh, they're centered around that for the right reasons because they're typically dealing with technical people and leading larger IT departments in yeah. in more sort of mid-sized and enterprise organizations. So yes, you're going to be talking about technical solutions. You're going to be talking technical, but most of the MSPs exist in that uh, SMB and mid-market space where right. in most cases, probably 80% of the time, they're not talking to someone technical. On occasion, it's a larger corp that has maybe an IT manager or an IT director, something like that. But uh, you know, I t- often tell people in the MSP community, you're there because they don't understand technology and you they don't want to understand technology. That's <laughs> right. why you're in the room. Yeah. Right? So leading with technical solutions is not really the right way to go. It's, you know, uh, uh, I'm confident on what I can provide for your business as far as outcomes. And, you mm-hmm. know, if you're interested in what we use for that stack, I can tell you. But most people, they don't really care. They're just like, right. good, you do your technical thing. And <laughs> as long as my staff are happy and uh, we're able to keep the email flowing and internet's on and stuff just works, then great. Right. That, that's what we're looking for, right? Yeah. The best MSP or VAR is one that's invisible, <laughs> right? Like yes. they don't want to see you. They just... <laughs> <laughs> Which also leads to the IT the IT man's dilemma of you know hey all this stuff is broken why do I continue to pay you to to fix all this stuff and then you end up fixing it and they're like hey I don't call you anymore what do I fi- what do I still pay right. you for <laughs> you, you you pay me because you don't have to call me that's why you pay me right right exactly um, exactly and I'm always expecting you Todd to like give us some quote from some like. Um, someone out there right in the universe you you always bring some quotes so i'm going to need that from you at some point during this sure. right I know, I know you'll yeah. i always learn something right well now i didn't know that you were the guy that like wore the tie in in school so even more respect right that takes right. courage <laughs> <laughs> had to get the business done right <laughs> yeah man well all right so um like i mentioned earlier so you as evolve like you're creating content boot camps kind of educational courses right for some of these msps vars the one that um i kind of wanted to just talk through if you're okay with is your um is a service manager boot camp course um that you've had out there for a while and i know you have a, a, a new project management course that's is it already been released yeah just released uh this uh past week actually so oh cool fresh. okay yep. Great timing. Um, but maybe can, can you give me like a little bit of, um, you and I were talking before the show and you called it the missing manual, right, for an MSP, um, your service manager boot camp. So like, can you kind of break down some of the high high levels of that course and, and maybe we can kind of pick, you know, pick apart, tease apart some of those uh, pieces, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. So, you know, I really built this course because in my travels consulting with IT organizations, I continually saw that this was a role that was crucial to the function of the organization and had sort of the least amount of support applied to it. Mm-hmm. And you know, this f- probably feels to feel familiar to anyone watching, but uh, the manager in an IT organization is usually the best tech who gets unceremoniously <laughs> foisted into this role. And they're like, hey, uh, pat on the head, like, hey, you're good at this. How about you show everybody else how to do that? Yeah. Uh, let me know if you need anything. And then the, the, the owner just disappears. And this new manager, <laughs> uh, you know, we call this a promotion. But I think that that does a disservice to how fundamentally different this role is, right? Hmm. Uh, Being promoted to a manager is not a promotion at all. It's a career change. And most technical people are not prepared for that. And they're never given the appropriate tool set uh, from a management perspective to be successful. So it's no wonder everyone ends up unhappy. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm floundering in my role. I find this really frustrating. So I'm just going to gravitate back to what I feel like I'm good at, which is doing the technical work, which is not what you need a manager manager doing right Right. so the first part of this course is really just acknowledging that you know this is not your fault so here comes the quote (laughs) uh uh, Archilochus, a, um, oh, a Greek philosopher, said, uh, <laughs> we don't rise uh, to, oh crap, now I'm going to forget it. It is. Um, uh, I can't help you, man. Uh, like, I don't, I don't know no, this no. quote. I don't know any of your quotes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we rise to the level of our education. Uh, oh, I'm brutalizing this quote. All right. Um, I can't pull it off the top of my head. But essentially, you know, we're not responsible for the failures that we're not prepared for. Right. So hmm. the, the lack of training in the management field is really shocking. And the stat is, is like most managers are in a management role for 12 years before they're given formal education on their role. And that wow. is really That's damning. Crazy. 
Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I really built this course as, as I said, the missing manual for this role, right? Like you, you either ended up in this role or you asked for this role, but fundamentally you probably don't have the skill set or the manual to draw upon in order to be successful. So the first part of this course is really just understanding what, what is the role of the service manager? What should I be focusing on all day? And what should I should, what should I and shouldn't I be doing in order to be successful in that role? Uh, The second part of the course is around uh, a framework uh, called management by exception, which is understanding what are the KPIs, the metrics that you can focus on that will help you to understand at a high level what's happening in the business. So then you can spend the correct amount of energy and time focusing on those uh, those areas of the business and uh, spending your time and effort where it's valuable, not just sort of. You know, uh, scatter shot all over everything because, right. in, especially in the MSP industry, everything demands your attention all the time. Uh, right. The third part of the course is around how to manage and coach people. Right, there is a system and a framework for being a successful manager, and uh, uh, most people think that management is is sort of a bit of uh, personality and somewhat artistic and that's not the case like you can be a successful manager regardless of your charismatic skills just follow these processes essentially and then what happens in most organizations i find this sort of um eerie sort of strata that breaks out is if you start to make managerial changes and actually lead and manage the team through a particular framework, 50% of your staff will just say, okay, great, I'll come with you. This all seems interesting. I'm, I'm behind you. You'll have 20 to 30% of your organization that is sort of a little hesitant and they ask a lot of questions, a lot of arms folded. Uh, but after you have some conversations with them and convince them of why this is a good idea, then they're like, okay, sounds good. I'll come along with you. And then there's sort of 15 to 20% of every organization of people that just dig their heels in, get really nasty. They refuse to do anything hmm. uh, to, to follow you along in this process. And ultimately, they either realize like the culture doesn't fit me anymore and I'm going to leave or their performance and their professional insubordination, this insubordination is so high, they end up having to be terminated. Right. So the fourth part of the course is just under, understanding what a uh, performance culture looks like and how you actually hire and attract staff that will be additive to your your organizational culture right yeah that's awesome man and like we could probably have 15 episodes on that course alone <laughs> right but um you know shameless plug that you need to go out to todd's website and find this course for yourself but we'll, we'll kind of tease apart some of these pieces right and so maybe Maybe at a high level, let's just start with what is a service manager, right? So, like, you know, maybe someone yeah. coming from the VAR space, their definition of what a service manager is might be different than someone in the MSP space. Is that true, one? And then, two, maybe you can kind of qualify what is a service manager at a, at a high level. Yeah, I think that is a, an important point because, uh, you know, a, a technical account manager could often be confused as a service manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that that's part of the difficulty in our business models is that people wear a lot of hats. And certainly yeah, as an owner, right. as an IT organization, you recognize this. I sort of joke there's like about eight hats that you wear as an owner. And part of the growth model is understanding which of these hats you remove and who do you give them to yeah. with hopefully some level of training. Um, so that, that service manager, I, I often feel is uh, one of the first managers that you're promoting in the organization to, uh, to go into this, this uh, career change, as it were. And what they're responsible for is the effectiveness and the efficient delivery of IT service to the client base, right? So hmm. how are you leveraging the resources that you have available to meet the volume of work that is being produced within your organization? Um, and I so think much, uh, sorry, man. so, so are they involved? So I always, I was thinking about like sales, pre-sales, post-sales in my mind, again, maybe that's too VAR specific, but, um, is a service manager, as you just defined it, are they responsible for, for being a part of the sales conversation? Are they more pre-sales? Are they more like the transition from pre-sales to post-sales? Like where do they fit in, in my head, at least of sales, pre-sales, post-sales, or do they kind of do it all? Uh, I think it <laughs> depends on the on sort of size and scope of the organization. So I would say, yeah. in, in a scaled out organization, no, they're not right because uh, the biz dev and sales and marketing side of the organization is typically separate. And hmm. but this actually goes to why this role is fundamentally important is. Uh, 
uh, the service side of the organization suffers from uh, what we call the tyranny of now, right? Everything is high is uh, high urgency, and uh, you know it's dealing with users who are frustrated and demanding. So the the sort of the gravity of this area of the business is intense. Uh, and that needs to be shielded from the other parts of the business in order for them to operate properly, right? So if yeah. you're doing a little bit of marketing, but you're also trying to manage the service department, the marketing is not going to get done, right? right? So that's why this role is crucial is because the the owner, typically in a growing organization, uh, needs to shield themselves from the hour by hour and day by day management that is required in that service department so that they can focus more on the client base and on the sales side of the organization, which they right. can't do confidently um, if if the, the service organization isn't a well oiled machine. So, right. you know, I, I, in the course and, and more broadly, I describe this as a ser- service pyramid, right? So these are the things that you layer on on top. But the base level of that pyramid is the service delivery of the organization, because because if the service doesn't work, the client will not listen to you about anything else that you want to offer them, right? Like, hey, I've got right. some great solutions, some good ideas on how we can actually impact the users in your business and grow your revenue. Don't care. I've had this this uh, Outlook issue that's been nagging me for two weeks and no one has called me back. That's it's it, It's a barrier for any further conversation that you want to have with people. So right. the service side needs to be well-tuned, well-run, and shielded, uh, uh, shielding the rest of the organization from those high demands, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in you mentioned like the, the was it the importance of now or like the sales? Urgency of now. Yep. The urgency of now, right? So like, I was just talking to someone the other day about this. Like I always envisioned it as like a, a seesaw, right? So sales wants right, everything as fast as possible, but if we give it to them as fast as possible and we don't have a highly efficient services team and, and kind of thought out process, then the detail of like what we scope, what we price out, what we essentially deliver to the client could be affected, right? If we just, we're just getting frantically everything out the door, we're not doing a good job of like defining the services, what's in scope, what's included, all that fun stuff, then like it, it kind of does a disservice to the business. However, if you operate, if you go completely the other way and you're like, okay, well, we need as much detail as possible. Everything's custom. Everything is ad hoc. Like we do all this work and it's not, it's not efficient. Like we can't get out as much, as many proposals as we want to out the door. And so like, there's like this inverse relationship, right? Of give it to me now. I can't give you much detail or give me much detail and I can't ever give it to you now. Right. It's like three weeks later. And so like, you got to figure out a way to like level the playing field. Um, and again, I could go on a rant about like tools and processes, right? I'm like, I'm sure you could, but, um, yeah. you know, I, I think it does start with the conversations like you're having with organizations, which is forget it, forget about the tools for a minute. Like let's understand the business and what we're trying to accomplish before we layer in tools. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think that's how you and I initially got in contact was like, Hey, we found someone that wanted to use scope stack, but their maturity level wasn't there. And so said, hey, you need to go talk to Todd because he's been there, he's done this, and he can really help you understand what you need before you start injecting any tools, right? Yeah, Um, Yeah, so I I usually say it's people, process, and technology, and in that order, right? You get right people on uh, on the bus doing the right things, you get the process in place so that there's predictable results, and then you can talk about the technology. And as technologists in our industry, we typically want to invert this, right? We don't necessarily mm, right. want to deal with the, the soft, squishy parts, the HR side of the business, as people describe it. Like HR is just management, right? Like it, you can't spin that off as a department in a 10 yeah. person organization and not deal with it. But that's that's uncomfortable for a lot of people, uh, well, especially like en- engineers you- going from an engineer to like building a business, becoming an owner. Like yeah. that's not where, right, like they are comfortable. They're comfortable in the tools, maybe a little bit of the yeah. process and not comfortable in, in the human part. Um, 100%. But you can't fix so. people problems with technology. That's the issue, right? right? And people yeah. don't really want to understand that. It makes sense to them intuitively, but we can, uh, everyone I, I deal with constantly wants to come back to, well, can we just build a workflow or a, a reminder system for this? It's like, <laughs> no, you need to manage them to make sure that they do this, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you build right. a workflow, they're just going to start deleting those notices. That's all. <laughs> uh, that's how the human will react to this. Right. Um, right. Your other point on this is, I think it's really key because this is one of the 
sort of the, the fundamental parts of the, pro- the project management course is this natural friction that exists between the service and the sales entity, hmm. right? Yeah. Of what are the expectations? Uh, you know, you're borrowing from typically the service department to get some of that pre-sales done, unless you're a very large organization that actually has, you know, SEs. Uh, uh, but, you know, the, the people that come from the VAR space, they're always like, well, can I, can we hire an SE for me? It's like, well, no, like we can't justify that expense. And quite honestly, you don't need it. You just need to figure out how to better utilize the resources that you have internally from a service perspective. So, yeah. but it's understandable why there is this tension around like, hey, I'm here trying to sell some stuff and I need some support you from you guys. I can't wait two weeks for a quote for this client because now right. they've talked to somebody else and we've lost the sale. So there is a very natural friction between uh, the sales or part of the organization and the service side of the organization. But as long as you come up with some good standards, systems, good communication paths and setting expectations that are predictable, yeah. most of that goes away. Right. Yeah, hundred hundred percent agree with that. And again, like that's another show in itself. <laughs> um, so maybe let's talk about um, the the management by exception piece because I'm I'm very interested in kind of the numbers piece, KPIs. Mm-hmm. And again, like I don't, we don't need to teach the entire course again, which I'm sure you could at any moment at any moment in time, <laughs> right? But um, that's what people go to your website for. Um, but maybe kind of let, let's kind of unpack that a little bit. Um, cause again, that the measurement of this role, um, these things as it relates to the business are, it's extremely important, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, management by exception is crucial, especially, you know, I guess in any IT organization or business as a whole, uh, especially as it scales, because there's only so much that you can keep in your head and understand is going mm. on within, uh, within the organization. So, most organizations from a maturity standpoint start in what I describe as the five guys in a room strategy, which generally <laughs> works pretty well. It's like, well, we've got five smart people here. I just sort of turn around. We talk about some things. Everyone understands it. We're we go on our merry way and manage our clients and our projects and things are generally pretty hunky dory. Then you get to about eight or 10 people and that model really starts to degrade. And this is mm. where I usually meet my clients is like scaling past this 10 phase where you have to start layering some, some middle management. Uh, and no one can run a business where you're getting like 500 tickets a day. You've got 50 projects in flight. You've got 25 staff, like uh, for you to understand all of the parts that are going on in, in the day-to-day operation of that business is literally impossible. Uh, so management by exception is what are the heuristics of like certain KPIs that matter to me? What should I be looking at? What are my expectations around how those KPIs look? And when they start to turn yellow or red, that is where I start to insert myself because the KPIs that are green, it's working. It doesn't require my attention. Hmm. So it's better spent elsewhere. Right. That's sort of the fundamental of this. And the way I usually describe this is the MSP that I ran, uh, we had we, like uh, the uh, the owner and I were fully aligned on this. To- both of us total dashboard uh, uh, junkies and love <laughs> no, the data. So we had, dash- <laughs> yeah, we, we had dashboards that hung over top of each department and like like TVs that faced each way. So regardless of where you're where you're walking through the office, you could glance up and see real time information about how that department was performing. So that was useful useful for me because I had access to these dashboards and I would check them throughout the course of the day who look to see who needed some support from me from a managerial perspective. But also like you could just literally walk by and be like, hmm, okay, that one's red. Like uh, <laughs> maybe I should go talk to this person, right? Like right. you're up going for a coffee. Uh, but that type of real time management becomes really crucial because as I said, like now you know where to spend your time. It's not you're getting to the end of the week and realize like, holy crap, Tuesday and Wednesday were a complete disaster. We've right. lost all of this productivity that could have been corrected if I knew that these things were off the rails, right? So it gives you real-time access to the information that you actually need versus just sort of this huge volume of noise that gets created in an IT organization, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Even even the ad- attention to detail of like having two screens back to back so that <laughs> you can see it on any side, right? Like small details in that is... Um, what I thought was cool, but, um, like, are, are there KPIs that you, um, have as like a standard, right? Like, like, is there a starting point in the MSP space that you say, Hey, these are like the top three or top five things, um, you should, you should start with. 
Yeah, it can vary from from uh, group to group depending on sort of where they're at. I'll usually when I start to work with an organization, we go through this the short audit process just to understand like what you're doing right now as it compares to what you probably should be doing from a best practices standpoint. But there are a few like one that I often from a service delivery standpoint that I always ask people to start to measure is SLA, right? Uh, so mm-hmm. service level yeah. attainment. And people will often say, well, you know, we don't need SLAs. We've not communicated that to the users. It doesn't matter, right? Like the businesses don't need to see these SLAs for even a year when you start using them. The importance of them is that it gives you a measurable output of the sort of the service life cycle. So how long does it take us to pick up a ticket? How long does it take us to start working on a ticket? And how long does it take us to close a ticket? Right. So those are the measures of the SLA. And what you'll find is the data, this is where the data is important. And I do end up spending a lot of time in tools is because the, you know, we start to look at the SLA attainment and you're like, okay, so it takes you uh, four days to complete a ticket on average. You're like, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true. It can't be true. Like we, we close tickets kind of by next day. All right. Well, let's investigate why that is. And often it's right. ticket handling, it's data processing, it's it's you not using your tools correctly, right? So this is where the tools become important, but it's making sure that the people have the information, they have the processes to use these things correctly. Then you can start to have these things actually become real-time measures. And then you measure them, you try to reduce them, you measure them, you try to reduce them, right? So you're right. It, it, it helps expose the process in the organization, which feels sort of messy and opaque to begin with. So that's a really important one. Others are utilization, right? So just understanding yep. uh, uh, the efficiency and the effectiveness of the team. So what are they working on and how much time do they spend on that? And I don't like to get crazy detailed on this, right? Uh, my view of this is just uh, work product that produces value for the or, our, our organization or the clients and everything else is other, right? Are so you, are you talking like billable, like billable time and, and billable hours? Like, is that what you mean by utilization or is it something different? in your mind? Well, it's gauged, right? So billable time is something I try to get away from, especially in Mm -hmm. the MSP model, because you're not actually billing time, you're billing to an agreement, right? So it's the utilization of uh, like even training for that matter, I call utilized time because it's Mm. creating value for you. It's creating value for the organization. It's important to determine what is valuable to the organization and to the clients and what is other, right? So uh, meeting time, right? Like, well, my utilization is terrible because I've spent three hours in meetings today. Well, that's a systems problem or a, com- a company problem that we could potentially resolve for you. That's not a decision that you made or just lost time, right? Like, well, I'm able to account for four hours of my work. I don't know what <laughs> I did the rest of the day, right? Okay, right. well, that goes into the admin bucket and people will usually <laughs> describe this as I, I made some calls I sent some emails they're like okay for four hours right like what were you doing you <laughs> they're don't important remember? emails Todd come on that's right yeah <laughs> so that, that like that's just the importance of understanding like how is the time spent right because from a sort of a managerial economics standpoint you have eight hours of the day uh, from your staff Uh, research suggests that you're going to get four to five effective hours out of them. You can maybe stretch that to six with a high performing team. And 70% of their engagement is driven by the manager. And that's why this becomes crucially important is because all of the other things that you try to do to make your staff more effective and more utilized uh, will be less than 50% effective in what you're trying to do. It's like working in the margins, like you're making 2% changes instead of focusing on the leader of that team who will provide an outsized impact on their effectiveness, right? Right. And it's crazy, right? Like you, you have to have a way to to visualize all of this. You have to have the data points to your point, right? Like in order for you to be an effective manager, you, you have to have some level of insight into what's going on. And until you have that, it's really hard to do any of the people process technology pieces, um, uh, you know, all the way through. <clears throat> yeah. So Most organizations are just throwing spaghetti at the wall, trying to, trying to figure stuff out, right? Like they're, yeah. they're, they're just crashing around trying to figure out how to, to make changes in the organization. Some of it's effective, some of it isn't. And that's, that's why I like the work that I do, I think is, is important and valuable is it, it gives you a more targeted approach on the things that you can change and to be able to measure the impacts of what you're doing. Right. Yeah. And like we, you know, I, I can see it when we first start talking to a new client um, for Scopestack. Right. Um, I can I can pick up on the words they're using, the way they talk about services, the way they talk about their team. And I can tell you pretty, pretty accurately their level of maturity. Right. And it's and it's really not 
it's not super complex stuff, right? I mean, it's purely like execution of some of the basics that make them stand apart. And it's not like some fancy algorithm or some fancy this or that, or having to have some like rock star engineer while a lot of them do. Um, it's really just like execution of a plan, right? Um, yeah. and, and running that business. So, um, well, like, like, again, like I think we could probably, you know, tease out 10 more hours. You and I could talk about this stuff all day long. Um, maybe like as we kind of wrap up this piece, you know, and again, we haven't talked about part, even half of your course, right? But like, what is one practical thing that when you're in there consulting with people like, or, or not even consulting with them, what is one practical thing, piece of advice that you could offer that would help Avar and MSP really up their their business, their services game. I won't, I won't even limit you to one, right, Todd, if you have more than one, but we'll start yeah. there. Uh, I, I think the, the easy one, well, actually, I, uh, to your point of like the execution piece of this is um, people often want to talk about strategy. And I think that that's important. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of strategy work with the organizations that I work with. But uh, strategy is still somewhat ethereal. And, you know, uh, another quote, uh, Mike Tyson, everyone has a plan till they get punched in the face. There right? you go. That's my kind of apt. quote. Like, <laughs> yeah, like uh, uh, I think Patton had a similar uh, quote of, um, uh, you know, uh, strate uh, strategy is uh, everything and strategy is is nothing, right? It's uh, something to that effect. I'm messing up my quotes today. I need to have these things readable. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, 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 to the point of like, things will never really go exactly the way that you anticipate and where people go wrong with strategy, in my opinion, is that they don't match it to execution, right? Mm. Like if you have an idea of how to achieve something and to, and you set a goal, what are the practicals that you actually execute on a week to week basis that give you that, that those results? And that's the part that's often missing, right? People get to mm. the, the end of the year, the end of the quarter, and they kind of reflect and say, well, we had all these plans, but none of it got done. Like, what, like, what were we doing? Right? right. And it's, it's that tyranny of now is all of these things that demand your time and attention, unless you're in being intentional about how you spend your time on a day to day basis. Uh, there are a lot of places that your attention can get, uh, can disappear to. Right. And that's not necessarily the things that are, are going to uh, help you to achieve the results that you're looking for in your organization. Right. Yeah. So uh, I think that understanding how you're actually executing on the strategy that you're creating is is pretty crucial. And the other point I would say is, is sort of circling back to what we said is is the manager has an outsized impact on your team's performance and not understanding this and putting it. Uh, to the level of value that is it's owed, I think is a, a crucial mistake that a lot of organizations make. Like think about it again, like 70% of the results uh, from an engagement standpoint for, with your team are driven by the manager, right? Like, hmm. they, and that's the same, the same idea of like, you know, if people leave, if people are ineffective, that is, is uh, the responsibility of the manager, right? Um, and if you're having issues with that, it's either that you've not invested the time to skill the manager or the manager is ineffective uh, or, you know, the, maybe it's the staff. Typically yeah. it's not, right? Like a lot of these things are, are changeable and addressable just simply by uh, scaling up the people that are supposed to be uh, fulfilling this role, right? Yeah, man, that's awesome. So go find a service manager today if you don't have one, <laughs> right? But um, Todd, like if anyone wants to talk to you, find out more about Evolved, some of the coursework, how can, how can they find you on the interwebs? Yeah, uh, you can uh, reach out to me, socials, uh, easiest places to find me on LinkedIn. Uh, otherwise, you can check out my website. Easiest uh, URL to remember is itisabusiness.com. Uh, <laughs> and I like that idea because, you know, a lot of organizations don't necessarily run it that way. It's like, well, we made a lot of money. Okay, well, how much is your profit? I don't know. I'd have to check. Uh, like, right. Okay. <laughs> like this is a business supposed to be making money here. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Well, again, man, like, I, I, you know, you probably have a billion episodes of things we could talk about in your, in your head and in your experience, talking to other organizations, consulting up and, and again, like I, I'll continue to, you know, pass people your way because I, I think you do a great job of, really breaking it down right starting for the fundamentals and you have a, a, a true understanding of, of what it means to have a, a really successful um msp so you know i, I really sure. appreciate you 
bringing your time and, and expertise to, to our podcast. But um, so thank you again, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so thanks for having me. Yeah. So for those of you, um, please go subscribe to our podcast. It's scopestack.io backslash podcast. You can get it on all the interesting uh, places you listen to podcasts today, you know, Spotify and Apple and Amazon and all over the place. Um, you can also find us on YouTube. So check us out there. But again, Todd, thank you very much. Um, we'll talk to everyone soon. Mm-hmm.